So as teachers, we often find it difficult to balance our work and our life. Uh, and that well-being can sometimes be a bit of an issue for teachers and it's becoming a bigger and bigger problem. I'm hoping over the next one hour, the guests that we have together with you can shed some light on some of these issues and hopefully share them to improve everyone's well-being. Welcome to the very first Ed Talks Global Gathering. Right. So we are here today for the next hour. We're going to be discussing strategies and techniques that can best improve teacher well-being. Now, this situation has actually gotten a little bit different since we've gone online. Some people have managed to cope with it. Some people haven't. Lockdown certainly hasn't helped either with the current pandemic. So I'm hoping with everyone who's live joining us together with our staff room faculty, who we're going to hear from in a moment, we can shed some light and share some ideas. So this episode, Ed Talks Global Gathering, a global community event for educators. Today's at Sunday, the 20th of September, and we are going to be joined by guests Toria Bono, Michael Crawford, John McGee, Naomi Toland, Erica Sandstrom, Anna Savino, Ashley Green, Sharifa Lee, Ashna Mahtani, Kawaku Anning, and Action Jackson. This show is also supported by Teacherly, Edspace, Tiny Voice Tuesday Unites, and The Kindness Coach. And you can also follow the conversation on Twitter, hashtag EdTalksLive, GG. So, straight to the staff room. Guys, welcome in the staff room, everyone. How's everyone doing? All good? Okay, time for your introductions. Hey there. How's everybody? My name is Michael Crawford. Always uh, glad to be here with you all. I'm coming to everyone from just outside of Detroit, Michigan, uh, in the U.S. I'm the co-founder of Edspace, uh, which is a social learning network. We'll talk about it in a little while, but glad to be here. Hello from UAE, everyone. My name is Ashna, and I am the Education Outreach Manager with Teacherly, a super cool ed tech that helps teachers unleash their teaching potential, and I am so excited to be here today. Thanks, Evo. Hi everyone, I'm Toria from England, te primary school teacher and all about well-being. Um, I also created Hashtag Time Force Tuesday Unite, so really pleased to be here everyone. Hi everybody, my name is John McGee, the Kindness Coach. It's an absolute honour and a privilege to be here. I'm based in the UK near the sunny seaside town of Blackpool. And as always, thank you Evo for allowing me to be of service to you all. Hi everybody, Erica Sandstrom, um, known as Green Screen Gal. I'm a digital learning coach and digital media teacher here in Boston, Massachusetts, and I'm so happy to be back. Thanks, Evo. Hi everyone, Naomi here. Um, I'm from Ireland, but currently living in Tokyo. Um, I created uh, Empathetic Educators, and it is currently my birthday. So I am yeah, excited to be here and celebrating with you all. So yeah. <laughs> happy birthday. Hi everyone, I'm Ashley from Scotland, but I've taught in the UAE for 10 years. Um, my recent master's research was on teacher well-being, so I'm hugely passionate about it. And thanks for having me, Evo. It's so nice to be with everyone. Hi everyone, Sharifa here. Currently live in England, England, grew up in Singapore, a primary educator. Um, and so happy to be here. Really privileged to talk about well-being. Thank you. Morning, everybody. My name is Kwaku, and I'm the uh, director for the Center of Innovation and Entrepreneurial Thinking here in uh, San Diego at the San Diego Jewish Academy. And I'm very excited to uh, be here and talk about wellness. Good morning, everyone. I'm Anna Savino. I'm from San Diego, California, USA, and I'm a high school English teacher and an author of uh, Sparrow's Well. And I cannot wait to share and learn with everybody today. 
Hi everyone, my name is Action Jackson Audrey from the UK. I'm the UK ambassador for happiness. I'm all about happiness. Just written a book called Happy School 365 and my mission is to spread happiness around the world, starting with education. So whatever you do, keep smiling. Thank you, Evo, for having me on this uh, amazing platform. Thank you very much to the guests for joining us. Um, I really appreciate your time that you're spending to join us for this show and share your insights. So, um, the way the show is going to work, you guys who are tuning in are going to get the opportunity to take part in four big questions that relate to well-being via a mentee poll, which I'm going to be putting up around every 10 minutes with a code. If you've used mentee before, it's going to be fairly easy. If you haven't, I will provide you with instructions. The insights that you will share and your opinions will start off the conversations in the staff room, hopefully shedding some light on some of these issues. But before we do that, I can see that there's quite a lot of people who have joined us. So why don't you on the chat window now to make this a, a global community, why don't you let us know who you are and where you're currently located? Yeah, Evo, we have folks from, from yeah. UAE, uh, Barbara Bray from Oakland, California. Good to see you, Barbara. Folks from uh, yeah, the UK, uh, UAE, folks from LA, Manchester, all <laughs> over the place. Do you have any folks from um, Liverpool by any chance? I haven't seen it come through yet, but there's still hope. Uh, I know, I know you, you're hoping that's the case because the uh, staff room's change in the little, little dynamic happening here in the staff room. We'll, we'll probably get to that too. I absolutely love it. Okay, guys. So um, we are going to be jumping into question number one. So if you are currently joining us, um, question number one is how do you feel right now? Okay. To join this, go to um, menti.com and type in the code 38158. One, one, and let us know how you're feeling right now. Is it a number one? You're struggling a little bit. Number two, you're okay. Number three, you are good. Or number four, you are thriving. Whilst we wait for those answers to come through, um, guys, how are you guys feeling right now? Um, Kwaku, how are you feeling right now? A bit nervous, I'd say. Yeah. No, I'm feeling really great. Um, sure. Uh, well, I'm, well, actually, let me let me reframe that. <laughs> I'm feeling somewhere between okay and good. Okay, um, good. And I feel like that's sort of where I vacillate these days. Cool. That 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 the, the, the uh, votes are coming through, which is really good to see. Um, I mean, I'm not going to go to Action Jackson because I don't really, I generally don't really get a positive vibe from that guy. So I'm just going to leave him be and let him collect his thoughts. Hopefully when he comes to answer the question, he's uh, going to be a little bit more energetic, shall we say. Uh, I'm going to jump to Anna really quickly. Anna, how are you feeling? Yeah, uh, kind of like Waku, I am um, I am in between struggling and thriving because uh, after seven weeks of completed school, um, I have never worked this many hours in my life, but I've never seen so many kids perform this well. And so there is just this really interesting balance going on between what is happening and well, what's happening. Yeah, so it just depends on how you see that. And so I'm somewhere way in between the teeter totter. Yeah, I imagine there'll be a lot of other people. Let's uh, let's see what the uh, poll is, is, is picking up for us right now. So um, we've actually got a big group of people who are right in the well, we've got seven in the okay, we've got um, eight in the good, and then we've got one in the struggling and one in the thriving. And so, um, based on that, the majority being um, okay or good, um, let's kick it off with Toria. What do you think? You know what? It's a Sunday afternoon. And I always like a Sunday afternoon. I think Sunday afternoons are great. That you know, you've had you've had your Saturday, you've had your Sunday. You're chilling. You know, if you live in England or America, maybe not the UAE. And you know, I think I've got to agree with them. I'm feeling really good at the moment. Good. 
and you know I do but there's always that anxiety that occurs maybe about 8 30 in the evening on a Sunday because you've got them that the next you know the Monday what, what's it going to bring but on the whole this time on a Sunday what a phenomenal time thanks you thank you very much uh, who's next um yeah I I'm happy that everyone's feeling good and okay. If, like I said, it's my birthday, so I'm feeling very happy. But also, I'm uh, yesterday was my celebration, so I'm feeling a little bit struggling at the minute as well. So sharing that feeling, there might be some people might be having that after a Saturday and uh, yeah, Sunday. <laughs> it's um, it's good people are feeling okay and good. I think that's where I'm kind of feeling mostly at um, this time of the night. Too, that's, so. <laughs> that's brilliant. And for everyone who's tuning in, guys. It is Naomi Toland's birthday. Woo! Yes, Naomi. We we appreciate yeah. you being here and uh, enjoy the celebrations. Uh, Kwaku, what do you think? So, yeah, as, as I was saying earlier, I feel like uh, I vacillate between okay and good. There are days where I feel that I am um, able to support teachers in the way that they need so that they don't feel as much anxiety about what they're doing. And there are days where I feel like I'm not doing enough, partially because I'm not in the classroom anymore. So I'm, I, I feel like I'm, I'm sort of going back and forth between the spaces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Uh, let's go back to Anna, actually. Uh, expand a bit more about what you were saying, actually. Well, it, again, I... I took for granted the downtime in my driving mm. back and forth to work and I don't have that right now and so I use that 45 minutes to keep working and so I'm working more I'm getting up really early working really late um, because the kids are responding and so it makes me want to work harder um, so yeah it's a lot of work but it's so worth it so that's why I am I just I keep teeter-tottering uh, in between the the rough and the <laughs> amazing brilliant um, Mr. Jackson. I feel good. <laughs> no, seriously, listen. I'm a combination. I'm struggling a lot because I'm having to put so many pieces. To... The business is upside down at the moment. So there's a lot of uncertainty. But I'm also thriving. And the reason why is I never attach my identity to what I do. Because when I attach my identity to what I do, it messes with who I am. Who I am is different to what I do. So that, for me, that's why I'm struggling with the business, but I'm thriving in who I am. Amen. And, you know, I mean, I love the fact that Action Jackson, number one, it says something positive because that's quite rare. Number two, has separated who you are from what you do. Uh, obviously a big fan of yours, sir, and um, really appreciate your wisdom. Let's have a quick look at the, um, at the poll. If we flick back to the poll, we've got a lot more goods actually now. The goods have gone up to 13, OKs are on 8. And then we've got a couple on either side that are feeling like they're really thriving or they're struggling. Guys, we do hope um, people start to feel a little bit more positive and energised as we work our way through this chat. Um, I'm going to jump to, let me just quickly have a look. I'm going to jump to Ashna. Ashna, you've got um, a couple of things that you would like to share. Is that right? Hey, Eva. Thank you. Yeah, that is right. Um... Something that I want to share with everyone is that today, as we all know, of course, is only the 20th of September. And it's only the 20th of September, and I have already seen so many tweets from school teachers about breaking down in tears at the end of the school day and crying in their car. It is concerning. Everyone wonders, you know, what does the future of teaching and learning look like in this new normal? Well, it looks stressful. But, you know, one thing I don't understand is who's asking, what does the mental health of our teachers look like in the new normal? Who is going to make well-being resources just a little bit more accessible in this new normal? Because we all know that taking care of your mental health is definitely easier said than done. 
It's challenging and it's even time consuming to find the right resources to support you, especially when you're so busy either lesson planning, dealing with Zoom calls, or perhaps even juggling your own passion projects such as a YouTube talk show, right, Evo? <laughs> so how do you squeeze everything in? It's, it's really a struggle. So something that the team here at Teacherly have been working on that I'm really excited to share with all of your viewers today is something we call Audible Wellbeing. With the wholehearted intention for teachers to receive affordable and convenient self-care. We've currently worked alongside Dr. Louise Lambert, a positive psychologist with the most soothing and relaxing voice ever, to create these bite-sized podcasts to improve your mental health and bringing more joy and even inspiration into your teaching. So we've gone ahead and we've created four separate courses that are tailored to wherever you are in your teaching journey, whether you're an NQT, a seasoned teacher, a senior leader, or a university student just about to start their journey into teaching. You can listen to an episode during lunch, on your ride home, or even while you're making dinner. The time investment is really minimal, but the impact will be huge. So we really hope something like this will help teachers and allow them to have better days. So if anyone was interested in signing up, they can do that on www.teacherly.io. And the first two episodes are free, so you can always see how that works with your well-being and your self-care routine. So that's what I wanted to share with everyone today. Thank you very much, Ashna. That's uh, awesome. And, and, and guys, if you're listening, uh, those resources are, are free. You can you can access them. And teachers are doing a great job supporting teachers, not just inside the classroom, but outside the classroom as well. Um, we've got a couple of positive messages. I'm going to jump to the birthday girl, Naomi. Um, yeah. What are these positive yeah, questions so, about? Um, so as part of like empathetic educators, we kind of look into the neuroscience and like how we can look after ourselves and what's like what's good practice like that. So um, me and Eva were talking about how we can try and give some affirmations and show some gratitude towards our teachers and people who are supporting us, especially in this difficult time. And um, so we on our hashtag teacher shout out. And the first one was from uh, Kesha McDonald, uh, Keisha from um, from Hawaii. <laughs> and she says, shout out to Zachary Mor Morita for his embodiment of growth mindset, lifelong learning and silver linings, his dedication to student voice, student innovation, the profession and drive for continuous improvement always inspires me and puts wins in my sails. How beautiful is that? So, um, yeah, a really great teacher shout out. And uh, our next one is uh, from our own Melissa Hayes. And... Um, she said, my positive impact this week was my whole hashtag OGC, hashtag 4OCF, PL, PLN, hashtag walking ed, and my whole PLF. I love my Twitter family, heart you all, and then she shared some people. So I think that's like Twitter is such a great place, especially in this time where we can't um, connect as much, just to feel like that support and feel that network. So yeah, great shout out, guys. That's awesome. And, you know, those positive affirmations, I mean, they just make such a difference. This is one of the things I really like about Twitter, the way that everyone just shares that kindness and, and that warmth. Do you know what I mean? And this is where I've met all of you. And you can, like, have that empathy for each other. Like, you really yeah. understand them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. 100%. Um, so thank you for, for sharing that, Naomi. Um, we're going to be jumping into question two now. Um, question two, um, how often do you practice self-care okay same menti.com code is the same as last time three eight one five eight one one please share your thoughts on this and uh yeah we'll be coming back to you with a couple of opinions on it uh, whilst we're collecting some of the um the polls on that guys um practicing self-care um john Tell us a little bit about what you do. Have I unmuted? You're not now. You're fine now. Okay. So, yes, yeah, so I, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm the UK ambassador for kindness. I just eat, breathe and sleep kindness. So, you know, I'd like to reframe them words of self-care to self-loving kindness. So, so for me, it's really important from the from the moment I wake up in the morning and I hear that, hear that little monkey mind, you know, racing. 
it's just to grab it straight away. And I always tend to start the morning first thing with saying five things that I'm really grateful for. And sometimes it changes, but I start with gratitude. And now when I say gratitude, I, I talk about, it's what I call being kind to your mind. Just to start with the mind, as soon as you wake up, start with the mind, you know, have compassion for yourself, you know, that you're doing your best. So I start with my mind first. I give it a nice little massage, self-loving kindness. And then once I feel that settling down, then I, I sneak into my Zen Den, which is my room where I, you know, where I work the magic. And then I, I store it on the body. I'll be kind to the body. So I like to do yoga. I like to get the movement going. And I just like to thank this body that it can do what it's going to do for the rest of the day in the movement. And then I start on my emotions. I start to be kind to my emotions. I start to give myself praise, saying I'm a good dad. You know, I'm doing my best. I just want to be of service today. And then as I go about my day, what really tops up my glass with my self-loving kindness is being of service for others. So in the current pandemic, seeing so many teaching staff and being blessed to work in so many different schools and communities is when I get that opportunity to prop them up, is to, you know, just just to remind them how well they are doing and, you know, and, and encourage them and share stories and let them know what I'm doing about my well-being. And it's surprising how many, how many teaching staff start to like think, yeah, yeah, what am I actually doing for myself? Because we can do this during the day, you know, as we're rushing around, whether it's from class to class or school to school, who can't on the inside give themselves praise and say, you know, I'm doing my best here. You know, I, I, I do what I love and I love what I do. I do what I love and I love what I do. We can always find, you know, s some positive words and statements, affirmations that we can say to ourselves that envelop the whole of our well-being, which is us. So we put it in our, our house, the house we live in, inside us. And that, that's what it means to me as well, being, being kind to your mind. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, who wants to go next? It's me. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Oh, this is this is such a. I mean, you nailed that. That was amazing. <laughs> uh, gratitude. I have a gratitude journal as well. Um, but with self care, it's it's really interesting because it's. I have found that I can't just think of it as something else I have to add to my list. Self care isn't uh, what people think. Oh, let's go to the spa and do our nails and things like that. It's. It's so far beyond that. I have a visual. I don't know if it's up or not, but um, it's, you know, doing the laundry, um, budgeting, and all these little things throughout the day to, to help us feel better. And whenever I find myself spiraling or getting anxious, I think, you know, I think about the present moment and how if we're anxious and worried about what's coming or even six, living six weeks from now, um, we're living in the future. And if we have the regrets, the shoulda, coulda, wouldas, and that we're living in the past. So whenever I start to feel that, I pick one of my many ways to bring myself back. A lot of times it's just breathing or taking a break. But I also celebrate my wins. You know, if you do your laundry, even if it's just whatever, I'm like, I five, you know. <laughs> and instead of seeing it as, oh, a to-do list, this is care. It's care for me. And um, it's it's good to, to, to treat yourself too, you know, even if it's a Netflix binge or, or whatever it is. But uh, knowing what self-care truly is and, and Maslow's hierarchy of needs, it, it, it make, it's a game changer. It's a game changer for me. So give yourself a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Who's going next? I don't mind sharing. Um, I'd love to talk a bit about, it's so interesting to hear Erica and John, the things that you talk about. So much of it has got roots in positive psychology as well, um, which is what I was studying before. Um, and obviously I'm a teacher full time as well and my wellbeing suffers quite often. There's so much research to talk about teacher burnout and things. So my study was about those thriving teachers. I wanted to find out what made them thrive. And one of the commonalities that came out in the data was every one of them mentioned an aspect of self-care. So like you were saying, it's, you know, can be different for everyone else. For me, like Erica, it can be mindfulness and meditation. Um, but also last week, I knew I was beginning to suffer. So I just had the down tools. All the work will be there tomorrow. I need to care for my mental well-being. So it's actually beginning to recognize those signs when you feel stressed and when you begin to feel 
burnt out, then it's giving yourself um, time. Also, there's a lot of positive psychology interventions you can do, like best possible self. And I can add some of that in the chat box later. But doing these interventions, you know, there's signs to show that it can actually improve your subjective well-being. So giving yourself that gift of an intervention for you, not for anyone else. And I quite often do those to improve my well-being. Thanks, Ashley. Um, let's go over to uh, Mr. Jackson. You're on mute. No. What's, I don't know what's happened. What's, uh, can anyone hear? No. Oh no. We'll come back to you, mate. We'll come back to you, uh, Ashna. Hey again, everyone. Um, I absolutely love what John, Ashley, and Erica had to say. It was so beautiful. Um, I think for me, self-care does happen similar to what Erica said on a day-to-day -day basis. It's just the small things, whether it's lighting up an expensive candle at the end of the day or switching on my fairy lights and watching a documentary or a Netflix binge. It's all of these little things. Um, but in a way, I also do agree with Erica. Sometimes it's not on your to-do list. But I think self-care... Once in a while, if you were trying to up your game, it does need to be on your to-do list. If you switched it from a daily focus to wanting to incorporate something more on a weekly basis, I think it should be very much conscious um, because your body will react to it differently. I know once a week, if I say to myself, I'm going to take a day off and just water my plants and go for an exercise class. It, it impacts me knowing that I have taken those three to four hours consciously to spend time with myself and to do something I love that isn't work, that isn't spending time with my family, because I do work from home. So it is draining sometimes to be surrounded by people all the time. Um, and my job tends to be quite social and I talk to a lot of people. So it's important to have downtime that you've consciously taken. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to share on my end, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Ashna. Uh, Jack, Mr. Jackson, are you, are you there? Can we, is it working? My back? Yeah. Is it, is it, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, it can hear me. Yeah, excellent. Uh, for me, great stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think what's important, we're busy chasing the next medal that we don't look into our trophy cabinet. So it's so important for you to look into your trophy cabinet, the things you've achieved. Okay. Just go polish those old trophies. Oh, wow. I did this. Wow. As a reminder. The other thing I also measure is I measure my gigs. And gig stands for gradual incremental gains. Gradual incremental gains. What are the things I've done today that I've moved forward? So um, I played with my daughter. That's a gain. Um, I had a glass of water today. That's a gain. And by the end of the day, you might have like 12 gigs that actually makes you feel good about yourself. Because sometimes, I don't know, you've been through the day, you feel like you've achieved nothing. But you've done everything. But when you document the gains it makes you feel good so that's part of what i do i document my gains so gradual incremental gains document them thank you gradual incremental gains i can barely say it if i if i learn how to say it i think i'll start helping myself out to be honest let's have a look at what the poll results are actually like for this one um so if we jump in jump into the poll results now we've got a large percentage, uh, the largest percentage, 12, 12 people have voted for daily, daily um, practice of self-care. Um, we've got the second largest, which is eight for weekly. Um, we've got three in monthly. And then we've got two who don't self-care at all. And we do want to increase um, how much you take care of yourselves as educators, because we want to make sure that we are at our best when we step up into the classroom and inspire those students that are in front of us. And they need that energy, right? They need that passion and they need us at our very best. So thank you very much guys for sharing those thoughts and insights, uh, extremely valuable. We're gonna be jumping straight into an inspiring video from Erica and her 90 seconds of EdTech. Hello, new educators, and season ones too. 
Okay, so it's your first year teaching and you are possibly feeling Let's try to keep it simple and answer the question, what advice do you wish, as a seasoned teacher, someone had told you your first year? If I only knew about kind of thing. So many tools, so little time to learn it all can be overwhelming to say the least. So keep it simple. Let's share a few must have tech tools and apps as you navigate your way through this incredible and overwhelming journey. Here are three must have strategies and tools and a little advice to help you make your journey easier. Number one, curate. Okay, y'all, if you aren't already, it is time to jump on your surfboard and on the Wakelet Wave. Wakelet is the most amazing content curation tool to collect powerful resources in a very visual way all in one place. They even have an app for your phone, which I use all the time, professional development, and tons of webinars, even on mindfulness, and a fabulous team and their new spaces. There's so many ways you can use Wakelet, but don't worry, there's an educator's guide and an incredible team there to back you up. Number two, connect. Connecting and collaborating with educators is your lifeline in this profession. You can connect through Facebook groups or Twitter chats, all kinds of ways, but this new fabulous tool you must hear about is Edspace. Edspace is the social learning network for world of education. Think Slack meets LinkedIn meets Instagram, but for educators, asking questions, meeting peers, and talking about teaching. It's so much fun, too. You can even share your hashtag epic teacher fails. It's also a place some of your favorite people from your PLN hang out. And number three, care. Okay, self-care. Self-care for teachers is more important than ever right now, and the waves of life are going to happen. We just have to learn how to ride through them. Now, I know the day gets crazy. Things will drive you nuts. However, there's some simple tools you can use just to keep your calm. It's important too that you plan it out because your time will get away from you. First of all, there are several mindfulness and meditation apps that are free right now for educators. And my favorite is right at your fingertips. It's a Chrome extension. Mindful Break is a breathing bubble that your students and yourself can just put right on your computer and use throughout the day. It is so worth it because our energy affects our students so much. So find that awesome support team. Wishing you a fabulous year. Thank you very much, Erica, for that. Yet again, another inspiring video. Uh, great tools for everyone to use. I can see that there's not just teachers who have tuned in, but there's also um, other people from the community, the wider community who have joined in as well. Please feel free to uh, use some of these tips to uh, practice with yourselves as well. Um, the next question, we're going to jump straight into the next question, guys. Question number three. Okay, so question number three, how developed is your school's staff well-being program? Um, Menti.com, the code has changed for this one. It is 2,804. So 2,804, how developed is your school's staff well-being program? Now, whilst I leave that up there, um, I'm just going to quickly share how our staff wellbeing program in the school that I currently work at in Dubai has literally changed over the last three weeks since the beginning of the school year. Uh, these tiny, these small gains, a little bit like what Action Jackson was saying, these small gains, small changes are making this, these big differences. Uh, one of the things that our, uh, our new principal brought in um, was a, a shorter working day on, on Thursday. Um, Shorten the working day just by a little bit, massive gain, right? Massive gain to morale. Also changed the idea where we actually got get to wear our own clothes on Thursday as well. Um, I spend 
half of my Thursday uh, dress down days in a, in a Liverpool, Liverpool top, which probably won't surprise you. But again, small gains and everyone just feels a little bit happier, you know. Um, he's also looked at um, emailing and meeting times, really kind of focused on that well-being overall. Uh, I want to jump back into the results before we go into the staff room to see what other people uh, are saying about this. The results they're saying right now, um, we have quite a few people who say that their school's well-being program is non-existent. Um, the same amount of people, so five and five, um, saying that it's limited. Um, we have pretty good at three and then great at two. So a smaller percentage at the top end, guys. Um, not what we wanted to see, but obviously this is an honest conversation. Um, question three. So, Naomi, do you want to start off with this one? I think it's the most important question. Like, it's, it's like everyone was sharing how they look after themselves, but if those opportunities aren't there for you to actually take that time and look after yourself and have that value, then it's really hard if you're pushing against something that isn't there as well. So, this conversation is so important. I'm actually not surprised by the by the feedback in that part because I think a lot of people do say that um, that space isn't there for them. And I think what I've been sort of reflecting on as part of my research as part of empathetic educators, I think systems is the most one of the most important things that we need to have in place. Like you're saying, making that time to make our people feel valued. And like, and if you feel valued, you're going to work so much more. You're going to get so much more involved in what you're actually doing because you feel like you're seen. Like we want to make our kids feel seen. We want to make our kids feel heard. And a lot of times, like I, whenever I talk to people, they don't feel like they're seen or heard in their in their own space. And I think for me, my biggest takeaway is high expectations is really important, but high expectations versus acceptance are two things that we need to we need to balance. So, so sometimes taking a step back and accepting this is the space I'm in at the minute. Where can we go to? But accepting where you're actually at versus where you want to get to, and trying to bridge that journey together is a really important thing that I think schools need to look at. So yeah. Thanks, Naomi. Um, Sharifa, how about uh, the types of things you do in your school? Well, first of all, I've got to echo, echo, echo Naomi. I think that is about, it is about feeling valued. It's, it's about having a voice. You know, I think you can have a framework and systems in place, but um, well-being and self-care is also a personal responsibility within that as well. So you can have all these things, but I think people need to look at themselves sometimes as well, because you need to understand what your needs are. You need to understand where you are in, in, in sort of your mind, in, in your mind, in your well-being. Um, well, in my school, and please come and join me. I think it's pretty good. I think we've got something that's quite good. Um, in England, we have what we call um, PPA, and some of you might know that. It's um, teacher prep time, basically. And um, in our school, Evo, it's like yours as well. So Friday is our half day. We dismiss the children just after lunch. And that is where teachers have they're allocated time, but they can do whatever they wish because we know teachers work hard. They work 24-7. They work in the middle of the night. Toria talked about, you know, starting to have butterflies in your stomach at about 8 o'clock on a Sunday evening. I think nearly all teachers feel that, you know, the, the night before Monday, you start to think about, you know, your, your little ones or big ones in school as well. Um, but I think as well, where... It is not directed time. People are unable to do the things that they feel are important to them as well. So for some, it might be going to the gym. For some, it might be just going for a long walk or, you know, doing your nails. Not mine because they're horrible, but for some it is. And it's those little things that count as well. Um, so, yes, I think um, part of that is also a personal responsibility. 100%. Um, I, I mean, great points made there. Um, Ashley, you work as a... Um like a well-being leader in your school, right? Share a little bit more about what you do. So, I mean, it does look a lot different this year. Um, but when we go back to last year, um, our director was really passionate about well-being of the staff, of course, as well as the children. So we started a whole campaign about character strengths in our school. Um, so all the staff did the VIA character strength survey, really spent a lot of time working on our own strengths and, you know, strength spotting in ourselves before we went on to using the same language with the children. 
But this year, we're still using the character strengths, but of course it does look a bit different. So when I think back to my research at like Thriving Teachers, one of the other things they talked about was um, they all experienced a really empowering leadership team. And also the Thriving Teachers felt like they were really considered and listened to, so much like they were seeing, both girls were saying before. Um, and something that's happened this year is the SLT have went right back to basics. They came down during the day and spent time. What are the pinch points? Why what's you know, why are you struggling with this area of well being and things like that? So even just feeling heard and offloading a little bit. It does make you feel so much better and then action can happen solutions sorry solution focused conversations can happen and like sharifa says well-being isn't something that happens to you you've got to be an active participant in it so there's no point in just having a moan although it does make you feel better at times <laughs> it's really important to also you know find a solution for some of the pinch points that are happening thanks ashley thank you very much um anna how about your school and like I said, um, we've been in school for seven weeks, and so we had a faculty meeting last week, and uh, there have been surveys that have gone out about how the students are doing. Um, some of our students made a video for us, for the teachers, telling us that they, they are appreciative of what we're doing, and so that was super helpful. Um, and yeah, our ASB um, uh, AP is amazing, and she puts that together with her, with her uh, team. Uh, and then during the faculty meeting, we were split off into groups of our choice. And I think choice for well-being avenues is super helpful. And I love that my school gives us choice because there are some people who just, they hear the word self-care and they're like out of here and they check out, but there's some that need it. And so I love that we have the choice to go to that or go to some techie um, uh, PD. And dur I chose the self-care one because I needed it because I was in tears that morning because grades were due. And I, it was about staying sane. And I needed that and I needed to connect. I needed to feel validated that I wasn't going crazy working this many hours. And so that connection, not just telling us, but asking us and we participated in the faculty meeting. And so not just listening to what other people have to tell us, but actively having a voice, I think, was such a great way to uh, bring that well-being into uh, into our school. That's great. Anna, thank you very much. What about it? Just remind everyone where you're, whereabouts you're located. Anna, whereabouts are you located? I'm in San Diego, California. San Diego, California. Okay, thanks, Anna. Um, last person, John. You work with a lot of schools in the UK as the kindness coach. Um, tell us from your angle, how many schools do you find really do a good job taking care of their staff? Yeah, I've seen a massive paradigm shift. Um, okay. over the last few years and, and definitely since everything that's been happening this year. So I'm working very closely in partnership with the Director of Education in Blackburn with Darwin. So there's like 72 schools, you know, 52 primaries. Then I'm, I'm also working very close with Chris Lickis, who's the Assistant Chief Exec of the Five Coast Academy Trust in Blackpool, one of the most, you know, socially deprived communities in the country. And what I've found is it's been it's been you know, the feedback, I also get to talk to the teaching staff when I'm in different schools. There's been a massive shift, you know, where teachers are feeling really valued. They're feeling really valued. Um, and, and there's been lots of, like, alternative, if you will, provision where it's really good to see external agencies, like people like myself and Action Jackson who run our own businesses, being brought into schools. So you've seen things like yoga, you know, uh, mindfulness, all these these things and teachers are getting this opportunity. And all I'd say to anybody watching this is, is one of the greatest pitfalls um, some teachers fall into is, is maybe not taking advantage of that. So teachers, you know, will, will you know, say we've got this initiative coming up for your well-being. It's not going to cost you anything. You know, we'll finish a little bit early after work. And, you know, you can take advantage of this as a team. So I just um, I, I just encourage any teachers to, who are watching this to take advantage of um, any alternative aspects of um, well-being within the workplace. Great, thank you very much. And you know, again, really valid points. And, and echoing what everyone said there, guys, the small gains, those small little changes to policy can make a massive difference, not just to teachers but students as well. So any leaders out there um, or anyone who's leading in well-being, um, 
I'm sure this is going to resonate with you. Let's let's do our best to, to push those ideas forward and change policy. Because if I flick back to those results, um, you know, it is still the majority of teachers who have tuned in who are saying it's non-existent or limited. And that is what's leading to the stress that teachers are currently under. And, that we, and we don't want that to continue. So um, let's uh, move forward and uh, move forward positively. Um, we're going to hear from um, Michael. Michael has created a safe space for educators to share ideas, including things to do with well-being. Um, and I want to see a little bit, I want to hear a little bit more from Michael about how this all works, Michael. So, Michael, let me Thanks. know how it works. Sure, Eva. Thanks for, uh, for the chance. Uh, and it actually speaks straight to the results you're, you're showing from question three around mm -hmm. non-existent or limited. Um, EdSpace is a social platform for educators. We had heard from hundreds of teachers across the United States and thousands beyond that around, about teachers needing opportunities uh, and not getting them to feel supported, to feel nourished, to feel empowered to do really challenging work. And that was pre pandemic. That was before teachers had to figure out how to teach in person and remote or just teach virtual or how they're going to meet their new students or how they're going to learn about new technologies. And so what we've built at EdSpace is a virtual place where teachers anytime, anywhere, all over the world uh, can jump into a platform that's for them. Through short video clips shot from your phone or your computer, uh, you can ask questions, you can share what you're working on, you can tell a story about something funny or challenging that happened in your class, uh, and you tell these stories or ask these questions in channels. So you can think Slack, uh, you can think kind of Facebook groups, channels around well-being and socio-emotional learning and online teaching and learning technology, uh, and it's a great place to find other teachers who are similar to you, who are different from you, who are looking for those kinds of answers. Uh, and in fact, we have a, a channel dedicated to Ed Talks Live for this purpose also. So after the show, uh, you can jump into edspace.live, you can find the Ed Talks channel, uh, and you can share a reflection. What have you taken from this? What did you learn? Uh, and that's, you know, there are channels for all kinds of things on there. Uh, and you'll find teachers from all over the world. So what we're really trying to do is allow teachers to take some ownership over their own learning and their own well-being journeys. Um, oftentimes, teachers have been uh, kind of dictated to around what's possible for them and where they need to go to learn and who they should turn to for support. They've been assigned mentors and things like that. Uh, but we know that teachers uh, are incredible people. They have their own needs and wants. They have their own unique context. And so we wanted to create a space for them to be able to, to drive that, drive their own ship. That's great. That's, that's great, Michael, honestly. And uh, I mean, so, as someone who really kind of is getting into that, that space, myself i'm really starting to discover and enjoy connecting with people on the platform so for anybody who's interested in joining edspace and um, the social learning network please visit edspace.live um, michael's obviously one of the uh, co-founders it's great to have you on board here um, so many people teacherly edspace all working together to help improve teachers lives thank you very much for that we're going to now go to somebody else who's going to help us improve teachers' lives with a couple of shout-outs. Naomi, are you ready? Woohoo! <laughs> just, just, just a bit of fun. I think that's like the whole thing of well-being for me is just having a bit of fun, having a laugh, having just like a, bit of, a bit of crack at the same time in, uh, in Ireland, a bit of banter. So um, next one is Stephanie, uh, another innovator um, from Google. So thank you to SM underscore... Uh, as ever more teach teach with Becky and Bonnie another innovator for all your support this week you keep me sane when it, when everything is swirling <laughs> we feel like that um, you also help me be a better teacher friend mom coach and more I appreciate you all lovely and we have Abul who's doing great things especially in the NQT space with um Aaron Berry so if uh, you're an NQT and like looking for support this is a great space for that as well Really loved by teachers. So, Aaron Berry, Mindfulness, and L Rob 89 for your support throughout my studies. Uh, have a wonderful week ahead. Lovely. 
Thank you very much, Naomi. It's uh, been really nice getting those shout outs, right? I think you need to, what do you reckon? Should we do that? Do you reckon we should make it a weekly thing? I think we should, you know, but yeah. it's been a nice affirmation. Yeah, let's, 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 get a, let's get a team together and let's see if we can do it. Let's see if we can do that as a weekly thing. That would be pretty cool. Thanks for that, Naomi. I really appreciate it. So we're going to jump into the last question. Um, and it's going to be based around um, descriptions, really. We've already got people who have jumped in, actually, which is good to know. Um, question four, use one word to describe how you feel now. Okay, so we're hoping to, to see some positive vibes. I'm going to take this word cloud and I'm going to post it on Twitter so it's available to people. Um, but, yeah, let's see what we can come up with. Uh, we've got, so far, we've got hopeful, invigorated, driven, tired. I feel you, definitely. Uh, anxious, excited. So for people who are tuning in live, menti.com, the code is 2804. People in the staff room, if you've got a little bit of time, please feel free to add to it now and let's just see how it grows for the next 10, 15 seconds or so before we jump back into the, the staff room again. So striving, happy, awake, Okay, this is looking good. Hopeful is, is, is still the key one. Um, pretty much relates to what situation we're currently in. Motivated, curious. This is all sounding really good. Love. <laughs> I really like that one. Deep. Um, determined. Great words, guys. Thank you. Keep them coming. You, I, think I, I think I said it where you could, you could do, I think, three words that you could do. Whilst, uh, whilst they're, they're, they're climbing, guys, I want to jump back into the staff room. Um, let us know how you're feeling right now, guys. Uh, Sharifa. With the one word, energized. energized. Energized because I'm here. Energized because I can see you guys. Energized with, you know, shout outs as well. Um, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, Kawaku, how about yourself? There's definitely a strong UK vibe to this uh, show today. So I was trying to think of a way to frame this so that I could speak to everyone on the show. And I think the word is confident, you know, and the analogy, the UK analogy I was thinking of is confident, like uh, the pride of London, Chelsea, when they suit up against any other team, <laughs> they often feel confident going into each match. Um, but, you know, seriously, I feel confident as a result of, um, the, all of the amazing tools I've heard from everybody on this call. The idea of the trophy case, separating yourself from your work, making sure you're creating space for, um, for your voice, for students' voice through choice. Uh, John, what you were talking about, like how your whole preparation process, um, I, I feel confident about being able to use these tools myself, but also to share them with my coworkers. Great. You know what? Thank you for that positive message. Really appreciate it. Very surprised from a Chelsea fan. But you know what? No one's perfect. Um, so, Erica, how about yes. yourself? Oh, my gosh. This is, an, this is an easy one. I feel grateful. <laughs> grateful. So grateful because gratitude is the magic potion. It really is. And just for all of these people and all of these answers. And um, Thank you um, for, the, for the joy of this. But Because the waves of life, uh, like John kabat says, you know, you can't stop the waves, but you can learn how to surf. And they're going to come. I had um, the very first day of school when the students were there. I drove into the parking lot just, what, three days ago. And saw all the kids standing there six feet apart and tears, just welled up in tears, thinking this is not what school is supposed to look like. And, but the more I thought about it and the more I, you know, stopped feeling horrible for the, for the kiddos, I realized that they're learning life lessons that are hard to teach, you know, uh, discipline. They're learning patience compassion empathy so there's so much beauty that can come out of it so that's all these people here today reminding me to, to be grateful for the little things and go to my math laws i don't know if it's up right now but the hierarchy and see what's missing what can i work on and because we're all born naturally mindful so let's find that little kid in us and find some joy and thank you action jackson for singing thank you john thank you guys you guys are great thank great. you <laughs> thank you and 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 
Uh, although this wasn't, it wasn't necessarily in the timeline because we're running short of time. We're just going to take our final reflections from everyone here. So we've 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 heard from uh, Kwaku, we've heard from Sharifa, Erica, Ashna. What about yourself? I think for me at this point, it would definitely be more of a feeling of togetherness and knowing that kind of we've all come together as a community to support one another and to share these resources that we have. So kind of this feeling of togetherness tied with what Erica said about feeling really grateful for all of these resources that we have and kind of just hopeful and confident of what is to come and that we're all literally in the situation together and there is a positive end to it. So that would be how I feel. Thanks, Ashna. Uh, Toria. Hi, thank you. Um, my word is connected, and as most of you know, that that gives me well-being. It really does. Connecting with all of you, connecting with everyone that's on the YouTube chat, and so on. And you know, that's the reason I created hashtag Tiny Voice Tuesday Unites because actually, every Tuesday when I'm connecting with person after person after person, it makes me feel better. I feel better when I'm not sitting there on my own, just thinking about me. And I absolutely love being part of a much bigger circle. And sometimes, you know, I forget how powerful our network is. So, you know, if you're feeling, if you're one of those people from question one that's feeling a bit down, plug in is what I would say. Plug in, improve your well-being. 100%. So that was more than one word, apologies. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, I'm going to jump to Anna. Yeah, I, I, I would like to find a synonym for connectedness because I feel like when we all share our different perspectives uh, on wellness and well-being, we get a deeper sense of what we connect with. And we aren't always going to connect with everybody and every idea and every perspective, but the more that we have uh, to draw from, the more we can connect with um, the people that align with what we what we want in our end and goal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Ashley? I think the word that I feel just now, you know, when talking about well-being, and it does link to connected, is supported. And it was you that told me about this, Eva, when you talk about find your tribe. And, you know, mm. there's a, a collection of people out there that feel the same way you do. And for all of us, it's well-being. So anyone watching, you know, if you feel that little bit alone, like Victoria says, there is a whole group of people that you can speak with. And whatever you feel, it's okay to feel that way. But there is a support network out there, and they'll help you feel more well through connection and feeling supported absolutely um john it's got to be kindness <laughs> got to be kindness it has to be kindness mm. you know and starting with self being kind to yourself and what came up from listening to everybody in the staff room today is i'm going to encourage everybody watching this to do something for me and for yourself really, which is to do something called time blocking. So I want you to block out time in your day and I want you to put it in as if you have a meeting to go and have an SLT member, if you're going to do, I want you to block out that time and, and stick to it. And that is your time to give that back to yourself. And I'd make that as, you know, as that commitment, you know, giving that back to yourself and, and whatever it is you want to do, I don't know, you might want to go walk the dog, you might want to go to the gym, you might be into mindfulness, I don't know, just give something back to yourself, just be kind to yourself, and like I said before, when you wake up in the morning, be kind to your mind, just that's go a, easy on yourself. That's a great point, I'm going to come back to that actually, um, I'm going to, uh, you've just set me off, John, I'm going to come back to you, um, so we've got uh, Naomi, um, how about yourself? Um, I'm feeling optimistic. I think for me, I'm feeling way too awake for it to be one o'clock in the morning because I need to work tomorrow, but it's fine. And we're so excited to be here, but I'm not optimistic probably for me because I think I was part of a Barbara Brace chat before and a couple of weeks ago talking about toxic positivity. And I think sometimes we can be like, we can try and flip things into like getting positive and that like you have to change your mindset. But being optimistic means that you're accepting of what, what, what way things is. But you're um you're understanding that things can get better and like people said, working together, working with people, getting getting connected and I feel optimistic and way too awake by two words. Yeah, hundred percent. Thanks, Naomi. Um Michael. 
this has been great hearing all these, and the chat is also um, the chat Flying, is alive right? and, and kicking as well. Uh, but uh, the word for me that I always remind myself uh, to to embrace is breathe. Um, I think oftentimes that as things get stressful or uh, there's you know so many different things kind of happening at once, and there could be all kinds of prioritization that's needed and, and so many things on the checklist just to remind myself to breathe, to slow it down a little bit, uh, you close my eyes even. Um, it allows me to kind of come back a little bit refreshed, a little bit more focused. So that's been, um, that's been the word for me, for sure. That's also triggered an idea, Michael. Uh, I should never get John and Michael in the same room with me because it's not doing me any favors up here. We're gonna take the final word from Action Jackson. Go for it, sir. I think for me is enough. I am enough. We are enough. You don't need to do more to be enough. Being in this space today has just been a blessing. If you're watching right now, get everybody's Twitter handle and connect. And if you're not feeling enough, just connect with them. Uh, please just remember that message. I spent many years just feeling that I wasn't enough, inadequate. But just know that we are enough. We are all enough. And thank you for what you do to our kids and, and for the generations ahead. You're doing a great job. You're more than just a teacher. You are a lifesaver. So remember this, you are enough. And if anybody tries to threaten that, come tell me and I'll deal with them. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. We're gonna jump quickly to the visual of question four. Use one word to describe yourself, describe how you feel right now. Grateful is the one right in the center. Um, We've got a lot of positive energy, and it's great to see you guys. Um, based on what was just said there, I'm going to propose an idea. We're going to create a new hashtag, everyone. I'm going to set everyone a challenge based on what was said, particularly Michael and John. If you're listening right now, you've already spent an hour listening to us all about well-being. Let's take some of that. Uh, well-being and put it into action tomorrow on your calendar and for the next three days block out time call it breathe we're going to create a hashtag called breathe guys that breathe time three minutes of breathe time for the next three days block it out see if you can make it at a consistent time and let us know on Twitter how it is. We're going to start this hashtag. We'll put it out tomorrow. And you can reply to it every day. And let's see if you can have just a little bit of dedicated time in your work life, your personal life, where you do absolutely nothing but take care of yourself. Listen, in, listen to your best music. Maybe sit down and read a book if you want to. Maybe don't do anything. Maybe just relax. But those are extremely important points that people have made. So lifting that well-being in everybody individually, whoever you are, breathe space, create it. Three minutes over three days, guys. Connect back with us because everybody here wants to improve everyone's well-being who's listening and beyond, guys. Guys, thank you very much in the staff room. I did, and you're not going to know this, but I did actually have a quiz but we ran out of time, guys. So, unfortunately, we'll have to push it to another time. And we can have a little bit of fun with that later on in a future episode. I really appreciate all of you for joining us. Thank you very much to Anna, John, Michael, Ashna, Ashley, Toria, Kwaku, Erica, Sharifa, Action Jackson, and of course... Naomi, the birthday girl, please enjoy your birthday. We are coming to the end of the show, guys. Um, I hope it's been beneficial um, listening to, to the insights and, and, and seeing what people feel right now. Okay, again, one more time. I'm just going to put up um, this one word to describe how you feel right now. Uh, really important that we can connect to ourselves um, and give ourselves a little bit of time. Consider that whole idea of breathe space that breathe time that we just spoke about and see if it works out next week on the 27th of september we're going to be epi doing episode four a leadership episode uh, and no doubt we will have a staff room full of educators 
from around the world. It's been great having you join us. Please enjoy the rest of your evening or day, wherever you are. And I really do hope some of the points that we've raised have resonated with you. We have a song that we're going to play out from Amazing. They are a group in the UK. And it's going to give us a little bit of a reminder of just why we put so much effort and energy into what we do. Thank you very much for everything you do in the classroom and outside the classroom educators. Have a great week ahead and I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care. Sunshine flowers and maybe